Stumbling out of bed And I still got you in my head From all those pretty words you said It's like I'm wasted Every time I see your face I'm losing track of time and space I don't know where I am It's like I'm wasted And I won't waste it And I promise that I I will stand by you forever I can't get you out of my mind I will follow you wherever And I won't waste it Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber. Hello if you're new. You're probably new. I'm still a really small channel. That's okay. Welcome to the Nut House. Hi, it's great to have you here. I'm Leanna. I'm married to my husband Rob. We have four kids together. This channel is completely about our family and whatever is really in front of me at the moment. Um, Right now I've been making a lot of content for homeschool because I am prepping for our new homeschool year. So if you're excited to join us for that, yay, welcome, hi. If you're wondering what the other videos on my channel are about, check out Under the House After Dark. That is basically where I talk about my child traumatic childhood and how I overcame it, or mostly overcame it. I don't think you ever really come over overcome trauma, to be completely honest. But I want to move forward because I just feel so far away back there. And um I make videos about homeschooling. I make videos about my family and our travels around the world. We just got back from New Zealand and we are starting a homestead. Never, never lived on a farm before, but we're starting a homestead. So check it, keep an eye out for those videos too. Um, thank you for showing up. I really appreciate all of you, all of the returning subscribers. Love you guys. So glad to see you every time. Um, let's get into it. If you clicked on this video, you know that I'm getting ready to talk to you guys about our reading list for our older elementary school child. Aubrey is in fourth grade this year, so that changes the game. You go from lower elementary to upper elementary, and granted upper elementary is only two years, but it's a completely different world out there than kindergarten through third grade. And sometimes third, about halfway through third grade, it feels like they're an older elementary school student and you can do hard, harder and higher level stuff in general. Some kids you can start as early as they need, my kids, we go for whatever goes, but this is just a generality. Genera See, I speak Leanna. Hi, nice to meet you. And sometimes I say words really weird. Sorry about that. I am very intelligent. I just, sometimes I mispronounce words or I say weird words that don't match what I'm <laughs> going for in that moment. It's me, it's whatever. Let's keep going. Okay, guys. All right, so let's just jump into this because it's not a long list. I don't make my kids read 100 books in a year. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't think anybody does that. My kids read what they're interested in because my the important thing for me is that they read and we go with whatever they're into and if they're not really into anything, I find something that I like to read or I like to read when I was their age and we read that. And this year I have a book list because we're going back to our eclectic selves using books instead of the internet because we were using an internet program. If you'd like to know more about our experience with online learning, I would love to do a video about that and leave a comment down below and I'll totally do that. Um, I have plenty of videos planned out for this channel if I don't get to it right away, sorry. I just have, but I will definitely get to it, promise, because I usually circle back around. Um, Again, let's get going because I don't know why I'm still talking. All right, so I got my handy dandy notebook that tells you how old I am because Blue's Clues used to have notebooks and now they don't. Ah, I'm old. All right, let's go. <laughs> so the first thing I want to tell you guys is I am doing book series with my kids this year because I wanted to do a theme and see how they can expound how they can expound upon what they read from a previous book in a new book and be able to tell me from the reading comprehension how they correlate. That's basically why I'm using the series this year. Um, all of my kids have book series this year, except for my kindergartner, who we're just gonna hope that we teach her to read and I'm gonna read to her as much as possible, but that's for another story and that's for another video. So we're gonna stick with the fourth grader. Okay, so late elementary school. We're gonna read the Fudge series, which is Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, and then it goes to Super Fudge, and then I believe the next one is Fudge Mania? 
I don't remember. I don't remember all the books in the series, but basically it's the Super Fudge series. Most people recognize it with that. It starts off with the tales of a fourth grade nothing, and it's about a young boy who has a little brother whose name is Farley Drexel, who they call Fudge. Um, he's always, they're always getting into trouble. It's lots of fun. It's lots of silliness and fourth graders think it's hilarious. So that's what we're going to start off with. And I think my daughter will really appreciate this book series because she does have a little sister who's the same age as Fudge, who is always getting into trouble. So I think Aubrey's going to have a blast with this, this book series. Um, the next book series I have is the Captain Underparents books. It's been very popular in the past couple of years. If you haven't heard about it, it's basically these two kids who make a comic book series about Captain Underpants. And you follow Captain Underpants on his adventures and you follow the two boys because they are in their own comic book. It's quite a hilarious series. Um, my kids keep asking if they can be Captain Underpants for Halloween. I keep saying no. <laughs> but we all have fun every time we read it and I think we've read it twice, maybe. Yeah, we've already read it twice. This will be my third time through. Um, I read it with my son, who's now in eighth grade. I read it with my daughter, who's now in sixth grade. And I will be reading it with Aubrey, who is now in fourth grade. And that's about the time we read it. So there is that. Then we're going to read Upside Down Magic, which follows a young girl who is in third grade. I think it's third grade. She may be in fourth grade. I don't recall. But basically, she lives in a world where... Um, if you have magic powers, you go to the Magic Academy, and you have to test to get into the Magic Academies. Um, if you don't have magic powers, you go to a normal school. And everyone goes into a normal school up until about third or fourth grade. And that's where your powers have probably solidified enough for you to go to school. If you don't have strong enough powers, you don't make it into the Academy, because you have to test into a category to learn specifically until you graduate. And it follows her and her older sister and older brother and her dad. Her mother is dead, and basically this little girl's magic is not, it's very strong, but it's nothing like anyone else's. So they don't really know what to do with her. And it's going to be a fun series to go over because it's nice to show your child that they can be different and still be awesome. And different doesn't mean bad, different just means different. And I like the, the concept of the book series. Um, the next book series that we, the, that we plan on going over is the diary of a whippy kid and that is also an older series it follows a young boy who is i believe in middle school he may be in fifth grade but he gets bullied it's his diary and you follow him and his friends through their adventures it's a pretty good series um most people have heard of it um i i did not get the chance to read it with my older two we were going to and then our whole move to New Zealand happened, so we ended up losing the book series. So I have had to rebuy the book series for my fourth grader that I currently have. And I'm pretty excited to read it with her and to see what she thinks and to see how she feels about it. It does go over concepts like bullying and being yourself no matter what. Basically, that's what I'm trying to instill in my daughter, instill, instill, sorry. I speak Leanna, and still my daughter this year. I want her to have confidence. I want her to grow up to be a strong woman. And being a strong woman starts when you're a child and being a strong girl. Um, I went very much into this with my older two and because I want them to be strong people too, my son included. And I want all of them to have the confidence to be themselves no matter what. So that's basically what we're going over this year. There's usually a theme. <laughs> um, next I have on my list is Matilda which if you haven't read the book, it's an awesome book. I recommend it to everybody. It was my favorite book in third grade. It is about a young girl named Matilda who has a very angry and mean family who really don't appreciate how wonderful she is. She ends up going to third grade where she, um, she had, well, she has a, and she starts off with just basically she's a genius. She can read almost anything. And by the time she enters school, which is in kindergarten, um, she has read almost every book at the library. She understands very deep concepts. She's a genius, really. But her family doesn't like her, and they don't take proper care of her. And then she meets her teacher named Miss Honey, and at the school they have the principal, who turns out to be um, Miss Honey's step uh, no, her aunt. Yeah, it was her aunt. And um, basically it's Matilda's struggles to endure at home and her struggles to endure with her horrible principle but it's a great book it teaches about resilience and being yourself and it's just a really good read 
I love that book. The next book on my series, I keep looking down because I'm looking at my notebook, um, is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I do not know if I'm going to plan... The uh, I do not know if I'm planning to read the whole series of from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe with my daughter or if I'm going to just read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe with her. It depends on her interest in the series. I have the entire series. It's a really good series. I've read it with um, my older two and um, we did it as like a nighttime bedtime story and I did do it with Aubrey when she was little with the older two but I don't think she really remembers it and it's not for everybody, so if she's not fully interested, we're only going to read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but if she get, really gets into it, we're going to read the entire series. And that follows four siblings around, two boys, two girls, and they escape into the land of Narnia. Most people have heard of the series, so that's why I'm not really giving a big explanation of the book series, but it is really good. They do go back to Narnia several times, and it does explore their experiences and other people's experiences, and they don't always get back to Narnia the same way, but let The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe pretty much introduce you to the series. Um, it is based in World War II. It is the time period that it's, uh, the children are from is, the, is World War II. They're out in the countryside of England, and they're there because that's what happened during World War II. And it start, uh, many children were sent off to live in the country with um, foster families while the bombings were happening in London. And this starts off a good conversation with my child so I can talk to her about World War II. It also has some moral concepts in it. It's, it's a pretty good series. Um, the next thing I plan on reading with her is um, What Were the Twin Towers? We're going to use the What Is, Who Is, and uh, what's the third? What Is, Who Is? what were what who were series and i'm going to interject more of these books as we go but we're going to start off with the what were the twin towers because um even though i've done the lesson with them all of my children of what happened on 9 11 and why it's important to remember she's nine and she doesn't really remember the last time we went over it so i think it's a great time to go over this book and to re-explain what happened and why it's important to never forget and her father my husband, Rob, is from New York, and um, his father, their grandfather, was in New York and just retired right before the Twin Towers um, happened on 9-11, and it's very important to our family's history, so I feel like this is important for them to know. The next thing I want to go over with them is Blue Sky, White Stars, which is about the American flag and the symbolism in the American flag. Um, in Ohio, you have to teach um, American history and Ohio history every year. So when you go to, when you, I'm doing this, I don't know why I'm doing this, I'm sorry. When you go to teach um, homeschool, you have to have some things on American history and Ohio history. And this is one of the things that I wanna go over with her is the symbols that are in the American flag. I think it's important for every kid to know if they live in the US and it's a good conversation starter about our current state of our country and it's a good conversation starter about where we've come from. Not, um, another one that I'm thinking about doing but I'm not completely sold on and, and I would love opinions in the comments below is um, I'm thinking about doing the Ramona and Beezus series. And if you don't know what that is, it's about two sisters, Ramona and Beezus. Beezus is the older sister, Ramona is the younger sister. Ramona calls, Be calls Beezus Beezus because she couldn't say Beatrice when she was a kid. I have read it with my older son, but it's, it's been a while since I read the series. We only did the Ramona and Beezus book. And I'm wondering, what did you guys think of the series? Did you guys enjoy reading it with your child? Um, did you read the whole series? Did you only read the one book? I'm on the fence about it this year because we do have a long list so far and I don't want to overwhelm my fourth grader. So please leave a comment down below as to what you guys think. Also, as always with these uh, videos that I do, feel free to leave a comment below as to something you read or somewhere you go for resources. Um, someone did mention Teacher to Teacher, which is a great website for ideas. And you just pay, um, it's usually like a small $2 fee for lessons. And you can go on there and search the book you're reading. 
um, and it'll have lessons to go along with that if you're curious as to what to add to this book series for lessons to do with your kids. Usually I do a journal entry with my kids, but I'm going to definitely go back to teacher to teacher this year. Not sponsored, just something I've liked doing in the past. Um, and see what kind of lessons they have because my fourth grader doesn't necessarily like to journal and I think that would be a big help this year. Um, that's the end of my list. It's a really short video, but my book list is pretty short. I try not to overwhelm my kids. I am an eclectic homeschooler. And like I said in my previous videos, as long as they learn it, I don't care how it happens as long as it sinks in. So we don't worry too much about book work so much as them understanding and comprehending. Thank you guys so much for watching if you've gotten this far in the video. I really appreciate all of you. I really do. Um, every view helps this channel grow. Thank you so very much. Um, and I'll just say my outro. If you like this video, give it a like. Comment down below. Love you guys. Stay safe out there and make good choices. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.